Welcome into Drew's Daily Diamond for Friday, July 26, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. Let me know in the comments below what your MLB picks are for today, where you agree, where you disagree. All is welcome. Smash that like button if you're liking the content as we got first game up. Not a whole lot of waiting around. 6.50 Eastern time, Sunshine State, St. Petersburg, Florida. It's the Tampa Bay Rays hosting the Cincinnati Reds. Nick Lodolo, the tall, smooth-throwing lefty, going for the big red machine. Shane Baz going for the Rays. Looks like the Rays, short home favorites, minus 110 on the money line, seven in the hook being the total. Reds come in four games under 500. They have won two straight over the Braves. They had an off day yesterday. And Lodolo, 3-5 ERA on the season. Last year versus the Rays, he did go four innings, giving up 12 it, hits, eight earned runs. That's what's giving me a little bit of a pump the brakes on the Reds. But overall, look to be betting on this guy more than going against him. Uh, we got the Rays coming in first home game off of uh, two city road trips, seven games since the All-Star break. So it's been a while since they've played in Tropicana. But they come in one game over 500. Very much in the mix for an AL wildcard spot. They just won 13 to 0 yesterday over the Toronto Blue Jays, a game we were on. That was a good one. But uh winning road trip, and they're playing decent, decent baseball. Um, Baz has 13 innings year to date. So we got a late start to the season. Uh, he's a guy that a lot of people think highly of, you know, coming off of an injury, just getting back into it, likely to be on a pitch count here. And in his three starts back, he's only averaging four innings. He has 12 strikeouts, seven walks. That's not great with uh, pretty much a four ERA. Overall, guys, I mean, both bullpens are pretty good. I go back to, you know, the Lodolo looking to bet on him. Uh, we bet on him last last week if you watch the show. Um, we actually took the loss, but I think he bounces back here, guys. I think it's a little bit of wrong team favored. Not a best bet by any means, but you're needing something in uh, in Tampa, I would go with the big red machine listing Lodolo as the starter. We get a minus 101 here as the short underdog Reds to start us off. Next game up, we're heading to Fenway, Boston, Massachusetts for the Yankees and the Red Sox. Nestor Cortez, the lefty, going for the Bronx Bombers. Brian Bayo going for the for the Red Sox. Nine in the hook being the total, minus 115. That's the Yankees as the short road favorite does look like 80 degrees with wind blowing out to center field as the Yankees come in 16 games over 500, but not playing their best baseball. They've lost four of their last five and they've actually lost five straight Nestor Cortez starts. So he's having some issues here. The Yankees starter they're up against the Red Sox surprising season overall. Talk about very much in the mix for the AL wildcard spot. They're right there 54 and 47 on the season. But again, not a team playing the best baseball out of the break. They've lost five of their last six. They got Bayo on the hill. He's kind of up and down uh, this year, pitching to the tune of a 5.2 ERA. That's not great. Now he's going up against the Yankees. They've actually been a hot lineup since the All-Star break, ranking number two by weighted runs created plus metric. And, you know, they're, they're the number one lineup against righties. So I think the Yanks can get to him. And we talked about Cortez issues in his last two starts. He's given up 15 hits, 11 earned runs, four home runs. His velocity is down. He's fade city here. Uh, although it is a little bit tricky because his start before his third start ago, he was against the Red Sox and had a pretty good start. Six innings, one earned. That's what uh, 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 makes it a little bit tricky because past performance was good against the Red Sox lineup, but he's been bad since then. Overall, guys, it's nine in the hook. It's a high total, but of course, a hitter's ballpark there should be a warm night in Boston with wind blowing out. I think this one gets up and over, guys. I think this, uh, you know, into the double digits and beyond here. I don't think either starter has a has a good start. And both bullpens have had their issues as well, so we could get some late so, some late fireworks. So let's go Yankees, Red Sox up and over the nine and a half. It's also reduced juice. Just risk 105 to win a hundred. Nine and a half over Yankees and Red Sox. Next one up, we get the Chicago White Sox on the south side hosting the Seattle Mariners. George Kirby going for the M's. Drew Thorpe going for the White Sox. Seven in the hook being the total. Minus 160. That's the M's as the road favorite. Mariners just two games over 500. They've actually given up the lead in the AL West now. They have not been playing good baseball at all. They are ice cold. 
losers of eight of their last nine. They do have George Kirby on the hill, the 26-year-old former first-rounder out of Elon, the former Phoenix back-to-back six-inning, one-earned run starts. He's got a 13-to-2 strikeout-to-walk ratio. He's riding a hot right hand. And speaking of hot right hands, how about the 23-year-old Drew Thorpe for the White Sox? They haven't had a whole lot to uh, to kind of brag about here, but a uh, couple pitchers in their starting rotation, pretty good, and he's one of them. I'm looking to be betting on, on this kid. Six innings, three hits, zero earned last time out against the Royals. And actually, since June 20th, he's got a sub-1-5 ERA. He's 3-0, and 13 hits given up in his last 30 innings. So he's been tough to hit. The problem with betting the White Sox here, you are getting a nice price tag, and I don't think the Mariners should be laying more than minus 150 against any Major League Baseball team right now, the way they're playing. The problem is the White Sox, we know this by now, 27 and 78. I mean, they're flirting with 40 games under 500. They are 40 games under 500. Actually, 51 games, excuse me. Uh, it's, it's almost tough to keep up as bad as they've been. They're minus 40 units year to date, so you've been losing a lot of money. I don't think there's anybody left betting the White Sox each and every game. They've actually lost 11 straight games. They've lost 14 of their last 15 They've won one game the last three weeks. Think about that. So can't get on the White Sox, even though I like the, the plus price. Um, actually, guys, seven and a half. It's not a big total here, but it's not big for a reason. Looks to just be 75 degrees, 10 mile an hour winds blowing in from center field. Two good starters. And the White Sox, you know, look, the worst lineup in baseball. They're the coldest lineup since the All-Star break. We like handedness of pitcher. They haven't been good against righties. Neither have the Mariners. I don't think there's many runs at all scored. I think both pitchers have a good start. I think bullpens do their part. I I wouldn't be surprised to think if this ends up one to nothing, you know, three to two, something like that. Seven and a half. We don't get to eight runs. Let's go Mariners, White Sox under seven and a half. Next one up. 8 o'clock Eastern hour, heading to St. Louis, Missouri, Washington Nationals, St. Louis Cardinals. Sonny Gray on the hill for the cards. Mackenzie Gore, the lefty, going for the Nats. Total of 8, minus 156. That's the Cardinals as the home favorite. Washington comes in losing three straight. They were just swept by the San Diego Padres. They're now nine games under 500. They do have Mackenzie Gore on the hill, a big name. A lot of people like him, but for me, he's fade city right now, guys. 25-year-old third overall pick a few years ago. His last three starts, he's averaging just three innings, so nine innings total, 12 walks and 12 earned runs. He has been smacked around. I wouldn't be surprised if St. Louis gets to him early. And Sonny Gray, last time out, he has a wild stat line. Four home runs given up against the Braves, but he had a 10-0 to strikeout-to-walk ratio. You usually don't see that, that many bombs and that many strikeouts with zero walks. But overall, 36 to 2 strikeout to walk ratio, his last five starts. I think he's able to do enough here against the Nats bats. I don't love this price as a best bet, but minus 156. Cardinals are the only way I can get after this one. So it's the Cards over the Nats in St. Louis. A couple games left here as we'll head out west, 10 15 Eastern start time. Colorado Rockies, San Francisco Giants, the fifth team and the fourth team in the NL West. Division, division foes going after after each other and it's kyle freeland kyle harrison battle of lefties battle of kyle's here total of eight minus 180 that is the giants as the home favorite looks like 58 degrees in uh in san francisco and colorado comes in 38 and 65 on the season just 14 and 36 on the road They've won four straight Kyle Freeland starts, plus six and a half units in the process. Keep in mind, they're getting plus prices a lot. If you've been watching the show, we've cashed a couple rocks tickets at big plus prices. The the issue here with getting back on them, they're on the road, and they're just not the same team on the road, guys. Uh, They score a lot more at home, and they've really struggled. Obviously, 14 wins for the season here on the road, and, and we're coming to the end of July. That's kind of embarrassing. But Kyle Freeland, 5'6", ERA. But the lefty, he was on the IL since coming back in mid-June. Sub-2 ERA, 25-6 to strikeout-to-walk ratio. His last time out, six innings, two earned runs. I think he could have a good start. He's outside of Coors Field here, and he's up against the Giants lineup that's bottom five since the All-Star break. They're kind of cold hitting the hit, 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 hitting the baseball. I was going to say football. We're still a little bit away from that. But Kyle Harrison... 
the starter here for the Giants. What they've uh, well, the Giants overall lost three of their last four, five of their last seven. They're not playing good baseball either. And last time out, Kyle Harrison, their starter, was at Colorado, so up in Coors Field. He went five innings, one hit, zero earned runs. So now he's coming back home to a pitcher's ballpark against a lineup that he dominated. I actually think he's going to have a good start here, guys. I know the Colorado Rockies have been hitting the ball well, but that was all in Coors Field. This is their first road game since the All-Star break. I think they struggle going from the thin air to a coastal city. And overall, I mean, Harrison, he's facing a lineup that I just think it's going to struggle overall dealing with the elements. It's a pitcher's ballpark at night, Marine layer, Hey, two starters that I think are going to have a good start. So uh, we get a total of eight. I don't think we get there guys. We're going unders on Friday and the Rockies giants under is another one. All right. One game left guys, check out wagertalk.com If you're interested in premium picks, smash that like button. If you're liking the content, Please feel free to uh, comment below. It helps out the algorithm. Any questions, fire away. We had a question and answer uh, yesterday's show. Love doing that, guys. So it helps me out. And uh, yeah, feel free to uh, let us know what you're looking to bet this weekend to try to find some winners. So we got 940 Eastern. Last game we're going to talk here on the Friday slate. Pittsburgh Pirates, Arizona. Diamondbacks, Zach Gallen going for the D-backs. Luis Ortiz going for the Pirates. Total of eight, minus 170. That's the Diamondbacks as the home favorite. I say Zach Gallen. Actually, we're seeing undecided on the odds page, and all of my sports books don't have this game listed, but I am seeing Circa in Las Vegas showing it minus 170, plus 156 on the Pirates. Unfortunately, I'm down in Mexico and I can't open my uh, my Circa app to see if that's a live line right now. But that's what I'm going to handicap this, guys. And I'm looking towards the dog here. I mean, Pittsburgh's eight and two their last 10 games. They're now two games over 500. And their starter, Luis Ortiz, 2-5 ERA. The 25-year-old Dominican has been great. His last time out, seven innings, three hits, zero earned against the Philadelphia Phillies. That's an impressive start. In fact, the last month, he has a one flat ERA, 23 to three strikeout to walk ratio, and he's blanked both the Phillies and the Mets over 13 innings in the last month. So he's facing some decent lineups and pitching very well. If it is Zach Gallen, he's actually had issues of late. That's why I think it's still undecided here for the D-backs. The two starts before the All-Star break, he actually gave up 12 runs and 10 innings pitched. And his last start, yes, zero earned runs, but he had six walks. I don't like betting on guys that just had six walks their last time out. So let's put it at this. Let's list Luis Ortiz as the starting pitcher. So even if it's not Zach Gallen, we'll probably even get less of a price. So if you can lock in this plus 156, that's the way I'd go, I'd go guys. Anything over plus 135, Luis Ortiz as the uh, listed starting pitcher. Let's go on the Pirates over the Diamondbacks late night, 940 Eastern. In recap, we got the Colorado Rockies, San Francisco Giants under eight, St. Louis Cardinals minus 156 over the Nationals, Mariners and White Sox under seven in the hook. We got the Yankees and Red Sox over nine in the hook. And we got the Cincinnati Reds minus 101, Nick Lodolo as the starting pitcher. WagerTalk.com, 5% max limit play up and available. Check that out, guys. We got the uh, NFL college football. You buy, you buy one of those discounted right now. You get the rest of the MLB season for free. That's the best value out there. Experts page, Drew Martin, WagerTalk.com. Comment below. Thanks for tuning in. Cash those tickets. We'll talk tomorrow.